Greetings, everybody. This is Alfonso the Rock is Moving here with Vaughn Benjamin of the Acubeca doing a nice follow up interview behind the music to speak about the Acubeca and Vaughn and his travel, his journey with music throughout this journey here on this earth. So, Mr. Benjamin, how are you doing today? Yes, I'm doing. Yes, I'm doing. Yes, I'm doing. I'm not doing my life. Nice. So, I'm going to jump straight in from the top and speak about. The beautiful music I was just privy to of your dad, Mr. Ronnie Benjamin. And I never even knew before, I knew you came from a musical background and understanding that I was misconstrued into thinking that he played in hotels, not understanding the sheer genius, because now I can hear where it began and yes, understanding sir. the structure. You understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My father playing one job, music, very well arranged, live horns in some of the earlier time through Puerto Rico to even Florida through studios like Ochoa if I remember the name from Spam Young, you know? Yeah, that is what Ochoa. Uh, I remember yes, working there at Ochoa in San Juan. Yeah, I definitely remember that. Now it's cool, it's so profound because in some of the music that I heard, I hear the remnants. The remnants are there of Aki Becca, Midnight of Vaughn Benjamin and understanding it, you know, Myself coming from a musical family, we often we we forget sometimes because we get we get so attracted to the noise of telling oh yeah you did this and oh yeah you did that and oh yeah you did that and forgetting to say no 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 I am continuing. Yes, this is true. You see, Denise, um, there are so many influences. When you are one year old or two years old, and your father is already playing music everywhere and arranging music and well-known in your area and so forth. As, a, as an adult, at a later point, you will have to take into consideration how many influences that you gathered, even inadvertently and without your knowledge. Indeed. And this is how it is. So, even listening to my father play George Benson instrumentals, uh, listening to him uh, listen to the band player Julio Iglesias way in years back. Many influences, many cross cultures, and a, a very unbiased mindset from early out. So, it, of course, it has to do with it, with who we are today. Absolutely. You know? Growing up as a product, you know, for lack of a better term, as a product of a musical household, it basically became inevitable that you would follow along that path of life. Yes, yes understandably so and like your dad i guess the world doesn't know you yourself play multiple instruments <laughs> this is like the secret in the back pocket that people don't know they just see you as yeah. a singer well you know i i do it as as i see um the current and the energy call for you know and we have so many players and singers and the scripture say the players and the, uh, the instruments and the singers they are both ministers, in a sense, because you, you, you administer music. <laughs> Indeed. And then a singer may then join, and you have words and music, you know. So it's a serious thing. You, you kind of have to acknowledge the way the scripture is written. You know, the Lord gave the word, and great was the company of them that published it, mm. you know. <laughs> no, indeed. Yeah. I mean, one can only respect your humility. They say, be humble and let God lift you up. But some of those records, I mean, you got over 60 plus albums. And yeah. out of those 60 plus albums, we could be like discreetly listening to Vaughn doing a piano solo or playing that guitar or maybe that bass or that drum sure. in the background. Sure. But the vision that we've had of Vaughn, not even a vision because your humility has gone so far, it spread so deep that if no one had ever seen you in a live show, and I think in only the last few years, because I was one of the people that I tried for so many years to get interviews, when I know you never did interviews. You didn't do interviews, you didn't do drops, much less pictures or photographs. Yes. It's a transition that you have leaned more towards doing the last couple of years. What triggered that? Well, I will tell you, after standing the ground for a lot of years and being able to cut through the 
the um, what goes with the industry as, as just fanfare and so forth. Um, primarily from the beginning, the main purpose was not to become strayed from the from the message and the path of Haile Selassie I the first. True, true. And as you can see from all all album covers, there are no covers of myself. Right. On the cover for a reason. Because even my father would say that to, to I at earlier points too, you know. Music, if there is merit to the music, the people will feel it. <laughs> true that. Yeah. I, I definitely feel it. And you know, when when I think of my midnight experiences and, and understanding what you mean as an individual and as an artist, it's so profound because I work with so many people in the industry and there are so many artists that seek the fame and the glory and the recognition. But you know, you know, I travel with you and you know, been around for a little while, you're not that guy. You're the guy where you come to do the work and the work gets the fame and the glory. Ah. Well, you know, um, some of it is common sense too, you know. Uh, it's about uh, integrity, credibility. Indeed. So, like, if someone brings you to accomplish a work, and if you're maybe socializing and in any way endangers that work, <laughs> right. or your health, or in any, it would be unfair to the person who, who previously pledged uh, or committed to such obligation. You see, so it's just a serious, it's a common sense matter also. Indeed. That I came about what I came about first. <laughs> right. You see? <laughs> On that note, let me figure this out. So, uh, a Vaughn Benjamin approach to a record. You work with so many diverse producers. Yeah. You yourself, a genius musician because you know what you're looking to hear and you know when you hear it yeah. in order to deliver your vocal ability and your lyrical content. Which goes first? The track of the song? How do you go about it? Um, it would be very unfair to say that um, the song comes first. Most times, melody comes. Many times, melody comes alone. Okay. Totally alone. So, you would have to infer there that, that the, the melody is drawing forward the vibration that become the lyrics also. Correct. So we would have to be fair about it, even though it happens the other way too. True. But uh, predominantly, like what Plato called the music of the spheres, you know? Indeed. And he's talking about the things which exist in the unseen right here as measurement, you know? Correct. And there are, we know there are such cycles, you know, Fibonacci series, right. Golden Mean, and so forth that makes a tree trunk round or a shell, the nautilus of a shell, perfect. So even in in pure chaos that looks like random chaos, there is order. Absolutely. <laughs> you see it? I, I believe that. I'm a yeah. firm believer in that. So you know in in Kabbalah they teach that you know everything exists in the universe. And then as individuals we tap into and I guess basically the word download. Stuff is downloaded to each individual person. Is this something that you can see and fathom and believe as well? Well, by the vessel. By the vessel. Okay. Is, is, is the uh, acceptability of the vessel in terms of... Uh, we can't tell the divine power what to do or who to give. Because they will say, the Lord giveth power unto whomsoever he will. <laughs> you know. So we can't tell the power whom that, that, that inspiration should come to. Right. But that inspiration um, is a pretty amazing thing. To see something happen in a very short period of time that if someone asks you to compose it, you, you, you can't see it on, on a human scale like how, how I would go about it. But it happened that quick as inspiration. Indeed. And that happens all the time in the studio, you know. Right, I, I, I can you see You come that. to a music and you think that I'm going to work on this for a while and you get up and sing and don't write anything down and the first take feels like it and there are no more takes. Correct. 
because it's an energy. You just work it, functioning from that energy. Yeah. And you know, over those sixty plus albums that you guys have done, there's been a few constants, in my opinion. The pulse, which in a previous interview said a human biorhythm, mm. that is that is your sound. It cannot mm. be copied. It cannot be transferred. It just is what it is. I think you know because I produce as well. Even if I had the greatest programmers, it couldn't be copied because you deal with the energy of a people. Yes. Sir. Your lyrical content that has been Vaughn Benjamin. That's what it is. You a word magician. The amount of words you can put into a sentence or a line and a melody, it still pronounced me because you chant, you sing, I've seen you rap, I've seen, I've seen you in so many different facets and how you can, I don't want to use the word manipulate because it, it tends to have a negative connotation, but how you can adapt wordplay and use words and say same thing so differently in so many different ways has remained, you know, incomprehensible to me, completely lose my grasp. But if you look at the world today, you will see that with every shift, with every paradigm shift, there is also a shift in the vocabulary that goes with the paradigm shift. Mm. So Explain. with the technological set, there was a shift mm. in also vocabulary and exposures. Mm. Whereas a youth would not have these exposures before, nor this vocabulary, nor no anagrams, right. OMG instead of oh my God, you know, right, right, and so forth. So, this is not something that just happens. It happens um, concurrently and contemporary always with the supposed upgrade speed. Mm, right. So you see? <laughs> definitely in the time. So it's definitely yeah. functioning in the time. That, 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 that I can definitely see. Yeah, I looked at a few other words, like if you look at the, the word pro, P-R-O-W, pro. Right. It says W-O-R-P, warp. The right. prow is the front of the ship that cuts the waters. Right. And time is what it it's says also emit, and it's the warp, the move. Then if you look again, you will see N-E-X-T says next, but it says T-X-E-N. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> so it's, it, and then if you look at, again at the word from, it says F R O M says M O R F more again. So the, the tech upgrade speed changes the vocabulary, even the hand to eye coordination of the generation, even the cumulative intelligence of the whole world. Right. So things which seem to be esoteric and old in terms of knowledge will increase, knowledge will cover the face of the earth and so forth. No, each human can actually take a look at what you're looking at today. <laughs> Correct. Because looking at looking at where you started to where we at today, so much you have said we're dealing with. But at the point, at an earlier point, it was said that it's too intricate. Um, it's not easily um, palpable, digestible, absorbable, right. and so forth. But then, no. In this present time, even five years old, years old, children very small now can comprehend even uh, the most complex uh, machines and manipulate them, which also makes them able to comprehend high-level information. Right. <laughs> See what I'm saying, my lad? So, Absolutely. <laughs> I like when, when a talk is able to reach something tangible, relevant to our times, you know, so give Correct. thanks for that. No man, definitely. It's like it's like you taught me once that you know, not everyone will get it in that given moment. But you cannot be bothered with those that don't get it. You gotta push forward with those that do get it. And because then, it's here anyway. Correct. It's everyone. here anyway, and so now even at a very young age, the children are able to cope. Indeed. In fact, they're much more able to cope than the adults. You know. Absolutely. They're they, like they're they more connected. Have, right. They haven't incorporated the element of fear so much yet. Right. So they retain and learn and jump and leap. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I get that. Uh, but go back to, to how you work in the studio. How do you approach an album? Do you 
go think about the song? Do you go in, do you hear a beat? When you hear the music, do you say, okay, I want the album to be this direction? Or do you work on a song individually and then have it, like you said, morph into that big picture of to what it will become? Well, actually, the way I've approached music for my whole time is that you don't really have much control in terms of you go and you make music. And when you reach to a bulk of music, like maybe 18, 17 songs, then you start to pick down vibrationally and topically and mm-hmm. and how related and contemporary are the topics and so forth, you know? Right. But most time is to go forward and put forward the vibe coming from the from the universe, from the earth and the realities, street, you know. Understood. Yeah. Understood. Alright, yeah, that's definitely a working blueprint that successfully worked for you. Yes, I and I wish you much success on that. Now, you're a very intelligent person. You know, you. if the computer needed somebody to plug into, to download from, I think you'll be one of the chosen candidates because the level of intellect that you have, you, you're so studied, and I don't mean studied from a, a person with a book just sitting studying for an exam. You're so versed. I mean, when I speak to you, you're versed from an eyeball standpoint, from a historical standpoint, and also from a scientific standpoint in everyday yes, living. Yes. Important. Where do you find the time? Because each one is unrelated, seemingly, but all related in, in reality. Correct. And to familiarize yourself minimally with as many as possible different disciplines gives you a well-rounded perspective, you know. Indeed. So yeah. there is no precedence over one to say that the Bible rules over science, science rules over history, history rules over technology. Well, the truth will be seen. The truth will be seen from the parallel, from the happenings, you see. So when they able to tell you something and then science tell you something, you know, you know, we said the ever living job. Right. You know, he that was, is and is to come. Correct. And then science says, matter is never created nor destroyed. Right, it always is. So it's just just a different way of saying the same thing. It's ever living, you know. Like we are, right? Because <laughs> to my understanding in my young journey towards truth and enlightenment i understand that you know where you know there are two concerns here in our world which are like carbon and silicon everything else is a product of or an illusion or some kind of i guess combination of combination so everything is that that's what we exist yes understood combination says know it and i be mocked Indeed. <laughs> when you turn it the other way, if you're aware of it, you may be scorned as a bit out there in left field. You but see? be not fearful of that. <laughs> it's a good, you don't have to stand with a multiplicity. You yes. can stand alone in firmness. Yes, well, well, the truth, Jai established this earth upon the floods, you know. A tree is the truth, you know. <laughs> True that. True that. That's the truth. So that's the nature of the truth. It just is, you know. <laughs> True that. Yeah. I mean, this is something I know of you, and the people that don't know you, they they would think you're this hard person when they see you. No, you, you have a firmness to you. You stand, like you say, I rest my still stand. You stand with a firmness, and if they don't know you, they don't know how pleasant you are, how versed, and how approachable you are. They'll look at you from afar and say, I'm not approaching that guy. And I've suffered from that as well. And is there a particular reason behind that positioning, that seriousness, and that that steel demeanor? I, I don't think that there's. I don't know what that, how to describe that, <laughs> so to speak, with you right now. But I will tell you that you have been with and around, correct, and you have seen that little children all come. <laughs> Why are they not afraid? <laughs> they recognize the truth. They can and see uh, the truth. And, uh, <laughs> And uh, as you will see at the end of a show or something, there are many people who they don't worry about it as strong and weak. We're Correct. all the flesh. Correct. We're all perishable flesh. Indeed. So it's not like that, you know. True that. True that. So people... I don't. I don't know what that is. I just know that that is how man is made, you know. So right. You just I've... being who you are. <laughs> yes, I. Indeed. 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 <laughs> All right, you know, we'll go back into your music. Is there, uh, you know, I don't have a, you know, 
can't say I don't have a favorite. I have too many favorites because I listen, you you know, you've seen me. I go through them and I just keep going and going. Is there a certain time in your works that you said you gravitate towards these songs more melodically, lyrically more than others? I'll tell you maybe something that many people wind up in years right now. Right? You know that sometimes when you sing a song, the world events uh, don't parallel what's being sung, sung at the moment, so it's all now extreme <laughs> right. to the mind of the listener. When the world events catch up with what is written there, then now, believe it or not, it's not so necessary to sing that song so much. <laughs> Correct. You're already because, on to the next thing. Yes, because that, that's a form of uh, unpleasant, uh, it's, it's not a pleasantry in terms of it can be looked upon as gloating then right and of course we're never happy to see ugly or happy to see unfortunate no. situation or circumstance so so it, it's a thing where sometimes it's not so important to sing that song right now because the pain that's coming down in the real world is enough you know and we try from early out to one of it, to show ourselves first of it. So sometimes that's how the songs move of their own speed too. Yeah, With street parallel, you know, yeah, what's that's, happening here. That's, that, that, that leads right into my next question because your songs carry kind of from teaching of Rastafari and African teachings and, you know, to look to the East. Yeah. The answers are to the East. and. You know, when I watch you perform, you, you, you often wonder, right, it's like, do you, is there an unknown pack between Vaughn and this unknown force that's only speaking to you? I don't know how to answer that. I know that His Majesty work and dignity, his dignity. Right. The fact that this is not a showdown between um, Yahushua in Judea and Rome. The story of His Majesty's life is of all the nations being gathered together. It's for the embodiment, the upliftment of everyone. Yes, so this is not just of Rome versus uh, Judea. Right. The Emperor fulfilled where you now you get to see all the nations of the world sit at the table. Right. So it became the real sound clash. <laughs> it's right. The real sound clash yeah, of what will stand us principle and moral and what will be the 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 good the international good right. what will be the international stability right. so there's no way to avoid it it will come up every time in any conversation correct because the rule of international morality you know will remain but a fleeting illusion to be pursued Indeed. and never attained and this is what the world needs right now the most Indeed. International morality. Right. People from any country on business, commerce, industry, or pleasure, or whatever, to be received and to be treated as uh, with welcome arms, as, even as a stranger. Uh, I'm, I'm a firm believer in that. I always try to tell people, you know, the, the two constants I always look for in life is respect and loyalty. Because they're the two things I think, had those two things, or if those two things, took full frontal positioning in these world leaders minds will be advancing as a people as a world as just a global entity and if you look at his majesty's life again when a foreign diplomat or an envoy was invited there was a palace built there were multiple formalities all the nations invited and so forth things which have to stay in place now today you can hear that in american politics that now we need again a uh, person-to-person relations, right. you know, a storyline, a successful storyline right. behind families and friends and units and people. Right. So it's relevant, has been pertinent and still is right now. It isn't a hollow creed like, oh, Haile Selassie's name is to be lightly trod upon. Right. These are the things which the whole world is crying out for right now in an exodus fashion also. True. Sure. Because they're not willing to stand there and die yeah. worldwide. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, by the millions. You know? Yeah, man, that's definitely it. World leaders, 
listen to truth right here. They need to like to grasp it that we must understand that you know together we go forward, not individually. I mean, the, the necessities of of natural resource prove these things. Right. Even the people who don't get along end up having to trade through the back door right. or through a third party because you need coltan. Absolutely. You need it from the Congo. <laughs> you need it. Right, absolutely. For all your microprocessors and your cell phones. So, uh, this is what happens. The interrelationship, interdependency of the world is the fact. Correct. It's not uh, up for grabs or what do you think and what's my opinion. All the oceans, all the air currents, all everything that happens, happens to everyone on the other side too. Absolutely. Directly or indirectly. Absolutely. We're all affected by it one way or the other. Yes. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Going back into the music now. Today is the Akibeka. That's the new moniker. But we just witnessed your past tour this past winter here. And the person in the audience standing, if they close their eyes, they hear Midnight's liberated is a strong word. But we hear this free flowing, this fluidity coming from the stage. I've followed the band for many years. You know, and I've watched the evolution of the band, you know, with the constant of who you are in the band. And I follow, you know, a lot of um, social media gobble, for lack of a better term. And, you know, with, uh, you know, the changes from Midnight to the Akibeka and Vaughn, and, you know, the separation between the brothers and the bands and stuff like that. How do you feel of the sound of the band of Midnight, the Akibeka, and the recordings? Do you see a separation in the three? Well, I, I think that kind of commentary is for a listener more so than for me to take that position. That position whatsoever, you know. I play the music and like I say, there are many players of instruments that are talented and unique in their own particular fingerprint. Correct. That's why the precincts use it, because it's only yours. Ah, indeed. That's a good statement you just said, because <laughs> I keep hearing, I keep not hearing. So there are many, many ones that will bring also an influence. Let's, let's not underestimate the power of the each one. Absolutely. The each one will bring something that's new and fresh that only comes with this particular their gift. They're bringing their gift to the unit, their it's fingerprint. In, yeah. <laughs> Indeed. You, you just said something good I want to elaborate on where you said with the music and with those 60 plus albums, so many people don't know that those 60 plus albums, you know, not taking any credit from the unit. The unit is the unit and we give them love and glorify them equally. But these songs are Vaughn. I keep reading on the internet, will he perform this, will he perform that? Does he still do his old stuff? I don't understand that question. Well, I just came into the understanding now that people don't know. Now I'm grasping that they don't know. So um, people can't be blamed for what they don't know. True. But um, all albums, that have sung, uh, you know, come out of inspiration, all of them. So, for me to then begin to make any partition between your work, between any different time period, it's um, not my place really, you know. <laughs> Correct. You're doing the work. It's not my place to, to be seeking such distinction or even making them become realized or actualized. It's in terms of getting through these times, these now. Indeed. And how we're going to ride through now, you know. In advance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. As a, as a songwriter, you're such an eloquent songwriter and so distinct in what you write. Have you ever um, written for anyone else? Have anyone approached you to write for them as well? Well, I've written for ones, but... Um, uh, it's not something that I've 
you know, I've collaborated and written with ones also. But uh, I'm, I'm open, I'm, I'm open to the world, you know, in terms of uh, what you make manifest and make flow and make good, you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, you have two different types of followers, you know, whenever the show, I'm a very observant person. I listen to the audience, I look at the audience. You're the people that love the up-tempo and there's the people that are just like myself that's locked to the human biorhythm, that pulse. Mm -hmm. It's like, I call it church for lack of a better word. There's something in the body that just moves. I think the soul wakes up when it hears that. It was like, mm -hmm. oh, I gotta go Denicio. I need to go listen to Vaughn. I gotta pay attention really keenly because he's speaking directly to me. He's not singing to the whole crowd. It's like everyone in that room, individually at that concert, thinks that you're singing specifically to them. And I'm speaking personally right now. When you, when you, when you certain songs, like when I listen to um, Zion Pavilion or um, Begin the Day, and I mean, I, my list goes on, Bushman, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't even know how a Rasta man stand. And when you sing these songs, there is, there's a breath of fresh air. Because I listen to them so much, right, that I can go word for word, but yet, I look at you, you're such an artist because, you know, you remind me of a Miles Davis. You come onto the stage, no one knows what to expect, including the band. They know we have, there's like, it's like the band comes on and when you walk on, there's a shift in the paradigm. The energy shifts, you take the mic and what comes out is always a breath of fresh air. Is this something that's rehearsed? How do you go about this? You try to walk in real time, my lord. Try to walk this earth in real time. In terms of what's happening right, right, right now, you know. And that's how I feel about any night you walk into the place, feel the place right now. Right. Feel this people right now. In the moment. Not yesterday and not last night. Right. That's right, right now. That's what I saw. There's no there's no rehearsal to the show. Although this although the band might be rehearsing, they know the music. But where the direction leads, you lead to the people, the energy of the room. And I and I saw that because I saw that on, the, on this last tour where I, I kid you not, it was magic. There was magic every night. Every night there was magic yeah, and a spectacle I, I to know, witness. I know, I don't judge uh, what, you know, they say tour, you know. But if you see ROOT root, you know, T O R tour, you know, the root, wow, you know. The road. Okay. But I'll show you. <laughs> okay. I don't really to approach it as tour. I know if it's successful in terms of the vibration in the whole place. Right among all the people so this is the effectiveness of it why if if you can vibrate and reach you know right that's the key yeah. the yeah. vibration how you connect with the people yeah. and the time nice nice when you sing at a certain point in your show you in my terminology i would say you zone out. I don't know if that's the right terminology, but there's a sense of steel that goes into your voice and you pierce the room. And you know, when I was young, I used to watch television and they have like the charm ladies and they would say they would vanquish that thing from out of the room. And I swear when you do that, it's like you seeing something in the room and you're vanquishing it with the steelness in your voice and that truth of what moment and what you're uttering. Is there something, energy that's going on on stage with you? Yeah, well, to be honest, yeah, those things real, you know. Those things real and the, the, the ebb and the flow, the way the body, the way the body deliver have to do with how we adapt uh, um, to situation and rise to occasion, you know. Right. And um, that spirit mind is stronger than the body, stronger than the physical body. You know, it will make the body do, <laughs> you know. No, no, definitely, yeah. definitely. I want to go back to some of the midnight stuff. And, you know, the new moniker, the Aki Becker, you know, the Holy Oath, which is magic, for lack of, lack of a better term, you know. It's so deep where, where you pull these things from. 
you know, the, the download as you call it, you know, from, you know, the universe being. I call it the abyss. I always tell people I'm going into the abyss. When people yeah. see me and I wake up in the morning, you know, and I turn on my morning, I press <laughs> your music on my iPod to start yeah. my day. Abyss is cyber too. Yes, it's cyber as well. Yeah. <laughs> the abyss, yeah. cyber, there we yeah. go. <laughs> the polarity of the words, there yes, we go. Yes. And going into that space and for people out there, there's a lot of people, you know, querying question, you know, how, how is it? Some, some people say that they miss their brother and the singing. A lot of people don't know on your records that you do so much of your harmonies, your vocals and all, all these different parts that you do as well. And people say, oh, you know, we miss Ronnie on stage, we miss this and all that. Is this something of a holding on to? Is this something of them not in the moment? Or how do you feel about that? Again, that's not my prerogative, you know. That's not my place. Um, the things which are dear to people by their spirit. Is what we deal with. Is what they have gathered and... Correct. I dare not even infringe there, you know. Correct. So, I just accept and respect the people in their different mindset and go through with what is real, right Correct. now, what is, that's, you know. That's perfection right there. Yeah. But once again, the work shall speak yes. more than the individuals and the players of the yes. instruments. And what's dear to people's heart, you dare not to, to go there, you know. Correct. Just let the nostalgia that's for be beautiful. Right, it that's for beautiful. them. Yes, I... Nice, nice. You know. What are there any um, future albums coming out for Aki Becker? Any works in progress to be released? Well, my lad, I can tell you to be honest. I have sitting with me right now. I'll show you when when the interview is powered. About about five masters, completed masters sitting right now. Nice. And I've done some work recently with um I Grid, Zionite, with um Yahoo. Boys production nice. with um I did a new Akibeka album together nice. on the, the last tour. We sat down all together and made a full project feel heavy and strong. Nice. And um I have new music coming from Russell. We have a lot of music sitting right now. Nice. Yeah. When I listen to the last release, the homage to the land, the fifth son. And, and to mention also I did some work with um, Aston Barrett Jr. Oh, nice. Also, really, really phenomenal work, drummer. Nice. And with, um, also with Craig, who is son of um, Sata Abyssinian. Nice. And beautiful work, you know, and all these ones are part of this heritage regenerationally, you know. Nice. That, that's so, so many ones, you the know. The fluidity continues. Yeah. It continues. It's, it's so funny how the youth gravitates to the truth they go and they find it yeah. and, the, and the collaboration it's so beautiful that you have the openness to welcome it as well but of course it's but of course you know um i want gifts you know for them to proffer them and offer them and and for it to be um reciprocal this is the beauty of anything when it's reciprocal when it is felt both ways and um, both parties are satisfied, you know? Yeah. No, oh, no, that's true. I mean, Vaughn, you know, I never like to take up much of your time. It's, it's just always a blessing to see that you're continuing the work and continuing to work with integrity. And, you know, the way, the way you handle yourself, not just on stage, but even here in this interview. And, you know, there is never a negative approach to any demeanor of you. You always see the positive side and that's something yeah, that I look I up to. Ja, I thank ja that ones feel this way because there are others who don't feel this way. Because sometimes when you take a position it seems too firm in the eyes of certain ones but you know ja live, you know and the truth stand. You know? Yeah man, give thanks for that. Give thanks for always welcoming Rockers movement to take your time and appreciate that. You know we on the journey with you we continue to want to spread that truth out there and let people know how much we appreciate this interview. It answers a lot of questions behind the music for people, you know. Continue giving us that beautiful magic in your soul. Because uh, and we welcome uh, it. Praise His majesty. I will see you I will see you. Thank you. Thank you.